was 3.30 and we went to bed at 2.30. Now we drive. Uh, we just loaded up the car 4 a.m. in the morning after the the last day of the new key battle of the pilots and um, we decided to leave, get a ferry to Jersey. We met this guy called Craig. We're gonna go stay at his and ride and he's with Bruno. Well, I actually met Craig in France and that was the start of, I suppose, yeah, a, a really good friendship from then on in. Tomo was like, yeah, we're going to Jersey to party and to ride. And Bruno was keen as he goes, yeah, Jersey surf, oh, so nice. We were like, yeah, sounds like a sick idea. Like, to fit in that would be awesome. We're looking forward to getting on that ferry and get some sleep. We had no idea, but we came straight into peak hour traffic. And unfortunately we had bad, bad traffic. I pray a lot. We started to realise we were in probably a little bit of trouble getting to the ferry on time. Fuck, if we had left just that extra hour earlier. From the minute we woke up, it was just like, go, 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 and then started driving and I got onto the uh, motorway and it was just, it was like a car park. Battling through the traffic, like in and out of cars on hard shoulders and stuff, just trying to get to the boat. And it's 10 to nine, the boat leaves at nine. You have to be there for eight. My GPS says to veer off left. I veer off left, Tom goes straight. Um, and I took the wrong turn in. We were stressing and didn't help that we took a wrong turn. Fuck. Not good. Ah, oh, you fuck. We made it to the port 10 minutes before the boat was leaving. Drove in and um, spoke to them like, nah, it's too late. Got told that there was no way that we were gonna make that ferry. Anyway, I phoned the big man, Tom Robertson, because no one knew where he was, and he'd gone in the wrong entrance. <laughs> I was like, I think I went in the fright entrance. And he said, where are you guys? Like, I'm at the desk, and they're gonna let us through. Where the hell are you? He's like, yeah, we're at the freight desk. So in the cars we got, I was driving. We were driving backwards down a one-way road, ran a red light. We're going the wrong way. Oh, fuck. So yeah, so yeah, bro. hectic time probably the most hectic on the trip and yeah we somehow pulled it off yeah that was intense yeah so when we first got to Jersey straight to the restaurant um and yeah it was real nice nice feed um that, that was unreal yeah thanks to me i'm where it is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. from there i had to go and work on my ski till one o'clock in the morning to solve the mystery problem could be a late night No matter where you are, you can always solve the problem. My garage has seen so many skis from the island, now around the world, it's had Australian skis in there, obviously craigs that we built for him. And... I know it was after dinner and it, you know, it's best just to get it sorted just so they could ride the next day, you know, because really wanted them to ride in Jersey, you know.
today are just riding. I think the guy don't realize that we're going very high. And then when I throw one forehand, I just hit the drone. And then... <sighs> the drone literally just hit Bruno's jet ski. They actually found the drone just buried in the sand. At least we got the drone. I think it's better having it than losing it completely, you know, because they're, you know, they're not cheap. Does he know that he hit it though? Yeah. I think so. Did he see it happen? Yeah, he said, yeah. He thought, Bruno thought he still stayed up though. Yeah, but I won't think he see it sunk. The guy took the drone. I hope that it's coming back to work. <laughs> for a few hours and Jolie's got himself a little uh, sleeping device. The sleeping device ended up being a very handy thing. He tied a scarf around his headrest and just laid forward like this. It's like a pillow, a, a mid-air pillow, really. Over the whole trip we drove around 6,000 kilometres. It was a long old way. That was just a big day driving. We knew we had to do it, so it was fine, you know. Crossed over the border into Portugal. No hold-ups like in England. Yeah, and the weather looks real good. I'm not sure how long we'll left, maybe about three hours or so. All of the places were pretty picturesque, but Nazare, it's probably on a different level. Red tiled roofs everywhere, like cobblestone roads. It's beautiful. We had good weather there, which is good too. It's nice to have some actually good weather. Yeah, it was awesome. Late on Friday, we finally got a ride in. That afternoon, we were allowed to ride, just free ride. So we were out there having good fun, like sending it, it was sick. got some decent waves. Everyone was pretty much sending it. I was so psyched just to go free riding. Finally we got some warm weather. Barely broken out board shorts and t-shirts until Portugal.
one good, do all my good tricks, and then I just see this wave come in. I'm like, just pinned it from ages back. Probably hit it a bit premature. And just got launched out. So I didn't get a combo out or anything, but just, yeah, I sent it. It was sick. That was good, you know? I trust my ability, but there is doubt there. I've only been doing it for 12 months. There's experienced guys, there's Gomez, and there's Ryan, who's been doing this for a few years longer than me, and Abraham, Bruno. I know I can do it. So it's just a matter of being confident on the day and bringing everything that I have. I think they thought that the surf was going to be better on the Sunday. Sunday was no surf. There was talk of they were just going to can the whole event. The event wasn't going to run. Everyone wanted to be riding, but no one wants a surf free ride event in waves that are less than knee height. The amount of effort and organisation that went in to get the event run, the backing that they had, I can see why they had to run it. Even if it was small conditions, they had to put on a show. Unfortunately, because of the way we qualified, we were against each other pretty much straight away. It sucked that we had to go against each other so early on in the bracket. Every time I see small waves or like no waves at a competition, it sucks. Like you just know what it's gonna be like and the outcome pretty much straight away. It's not ideal. The only time we wanted to go up against each other is if we were going for one and two. I won against Ryan, like, again, in a very tight heat. We were doing very similar stuff because it was small waves. Competition sort of makes it very, you know, you see an average wave and you have to hit it and do a trick. Like, it's all very rushed. I was up against Brandon Lawler in the quarterfinal. I had to throw out something pretty different and pretty special to at least attempt to win. Went out there and threw out a Superman barrel roll, which I think there's less than a handful of guys that have even attempted one. Got a decent amount of tricks out and a decent amount of surf riding and I went up to Matsuda and he said to me, you couldn't have done anything more, like you did a trick that it's never been done in competition before. Yeah, the decision went Brandon's way. I rang Nick after the event and I was pretty disappointed and pretty upset that he'd sort of sent us all this way and that's all I'd managed to do for him. I guess I thought they probably would have been higher in the rankings, but also knowing that, you know, anything can happen on competition day. I was a little disappointed, but it is what it is and you can only do what you can do. I feel like I went pretty average, and I know I'm better than that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and I'll do better, because I know I can. There's a competitive edge in me, coming from racing especially, that makes me want to be the best. I want to win one of these things and win the whole tour eventually. I think they're probably some of the best aerial guys in the world now. They're banging out super flips in the heats, rulers even. Now their surf riding maybe is something that they have to work on, but it's only 50% of the criteria. There's a lot more of a training aspect for competition versus just free riding. I think maybe we can, as a team now, go, okay, let's specifically train for competitions and work out a routine that'll aid them on competition day. Backyard engineering. <laughs> 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 
Joel Barry, take five. And it, yeah, that was his fuck. Hey, it's Ryan.